Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to War on the Sea. Episode 13, we're gonna start off with the Fletcher engaging a sizable force, at least compared to itself. Two destroyers and two light cruisers. Ideally, I would just get the hell out and call in the Washington's action group. Let them slug it out with these, gr well, with these guys over here, but unfortunately, that's not really going to happen. So, well, torps out and uh, run away. That's pretty much the plan. Nope, no joy. Enemy detected behind me. Interesting. Range, 18,000 yards. Oh, and for good measure, we're going to throw in some aircraft as well. So there is plenty to do. Now, let's uh, misidentify some ships here. Because that is my specialty, and I might as well stick with it. This is a destroyer, which I believe is either... Is that a Wakataki? No, two funnel. Well, it does have two funnels. One slightly larger. One, two, three turrets. One, two, three, four turrets. Not a Wakataki. Kamikaze, turret, turret. What are we even shooting at? Nothing. Unless there's... Oh, it's probably a light cruiser that's doing some shooting. Um, let me just pause this for a second. What are you exactly? Gun, 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 gun. Turret or torpedo launcher, torpedo launcher. But this one supposedly should have another torpedo launcher, so it's not a kamikaze. What else? Mitsuki. One triple torpedo launcher and another one on the bow. That is more like it. But this is four torpedo launchers. And I'm seeing six. Not a Mitsuki. It's too small to be a Fubuki, I think. It's not an Akatsuki. Not Tsuharu? No. You're not a Hatsuharu. Your turrets don't line up. Shiratsuyu? Funnels don't line up. Akazuki? Definitely not. And then we're into cruiser territory. So, in that case... Turret. No. 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 Uh, in that case, I'm going to say it is a Mitsuki. So, let me just click the right guy, because this also sometimes tends to go wrong. Click, identify. New. Um, right. Cruiser territory, then. What you got? Three funnels lined up. We got turrets all over the place. Kuma class. Two turrets. Three funnels. But I'm not sure if this is empty space or if there's a torpedo launcher supposedly there. Torpedoes. Eight. Two, two. Two and two more. I'm going to say it's a Kuma. Uh, that means that you are definitely not a Kuma class. Would you be an actual Tenryu? Six. Triple, triple. Check. Target one. Tenryu. Target three. Loads of torpedo launchers. Potentially Shiratsuyu. Or Akazuki. No, not an Akazuki. Not likely to be a Yugumo. Nope. Turret, turret. No, the turrets are side by side there, so that's not it. Ak Akazuki? Doesn't that thing have way too many torpedo launchers? No, it does have 12. Sorry, Akatsuki. Alright, we're gonna run with that. Akatsuki is target 3. Alright, Fletcher, we have some work to do. I want to target the Kuma and see if I can build a solution on her. Send some torpedoes her way. Now, my torpedoes don't range that far. I have a torpedo range of 14,000. So if I can just leave, that would be great. But then at least I know what I'm facing here. That should make it a bit easier when I'm dealing with the other uh, battle group. Now, let's increase the maximum speed. Zigzag. 
and just survive for 90 seconds while potentially shooting down another scatter craft. Come on, Fletcher. Need to get out of here. Need to let the big sister ship, well, not so much sister ship, but your bigger brother handle this. Because once these guys encounter that surface action group from the Washington, they're toast. Matsuki lost, that's fine. 60 seconds. In the meanwhile, we're trying to do something against that scout plane. Unsuccessfully, I might add. And I'm running at best speed. Hard to port. There's one aircraft lost. I'm not sure if I can identify aircraft. Switch to air. Definitely not a wildcat. Pete? No, Pete has three floats. Not a Kate. Kate's torpedo bomber. Jake? Let's assume it's Jake. Uh, air targets cannot be classified. Okay, so that's a bit of a waste of time. 20 seconds. We're staying at a nice range. 18,000 yards. Those guys can't hit me. Or, well, that's not entirely accurate. They can hit me. I just hope that they don't. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Fletcher can make it out. Let's go. All right. My time. You boys set a course and intercept that group before they happen to run into TF7. Although, if they do, I don't mind that much. Because TF7 is also fairly well protected. Aircraft spotted near the Washington. Screw that. Uh, Fletcher, I want you to merge. Because you're not very well protected on your own. Let's see, formation, eight the Fletcher, that's fine. Now, let's do some scouting of my own, because uh, as you guys have correctly pointed out, I'm not doing nearly enough of that. So we're gonna launch a Kingfisher. I'm gonna tell that to go here. And I can probably also do that from the other units. Stigato. Uh, does the Wichita carry an aircraft? She does. Several, in fact. Who's next? You're a destroyer, destroyer Juno. No, Juno has no aircraft. And Washington probably cannot launch another one. At least not immediately. I cannot zoom in even more. So this is it. Enemy King aircraft near Kingfisher. Fine. Now, as it happened, that attack that I thought was just going to be involving the Kingfisher aircraft is actually an attack on my convoy. Once again, it's just a couple of zeros that happen to be flying by and seem eager to do a strafing run. And, well, to their credit, they're getting away with it. There's one down so far, but here comes the damage. I really think that they need to do away with these strafing runs, and especially the survivability of these aircraft. Because once again, we have a bit of damage, a bit of fire. It's nothing severe, but it's just annoying. And you're just sitting there waiting for this stuff to end. Now, as my cruiser is getting repaired, I shit you not. There is a kingfisher, and there are zeros flying by. <laughs> I'm desperately <laughs> trying to do something, but this thing is mostly unarmed. The only gun that I have is in the back, which makes it very awkward to do gunfights against zeros, which are faster, more agile, and actually have guns in the nose. Unlike my little kingfisher. So, the best I can do is buzz at them angrily, or angrily, but that's about the extent of the damage that I can do. Um, it is interesting to see these things just buzzing about, and really not posing much of a risk to anything. Uh, come on, tail gunner. Range 370 yards and increasing quickly. 
Come on. Do another zoom at me. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> His buddy actually did it. <laughs> I think, however, that the Zeros might have expended all their ammunition during that strafing run. Or the AI is not quite adept at controlling these. Whichever it is, we still have a Kingfisher in contact with a couple of Zeros. And this boy is coming in real close. That was 30 yards. And there is still nothing that I can do. As it turned out, that zero wasn't quite empty and was able mm -hmm. to take down the Kingfisher. Although it took them a long time to actually line up a shot. Mm -hmm. Now this should be an interesting fight. Or maybe. Initially, the game said, hey, you got an encounter. And the encounter is with the Task Force 7, which is the Washington's Task Force. So the Washington, uh, the heavy cruiser Wichita, and I believe Soufflé, yeah, destroyer Soufflé, destroyer Halford, uh, Atlantic-class cruiser Juno, Nicholas, Waller, and finally Fletcher, they have encountered an enemy aircraft. But it turned out to be a bit more than that. Because, as it happens, there was also an enemy air or an enemy uh, surface fleet out there. So initially, we were just steaming towards Guadalcanal to find that surface group. And now, it's turning into something a bit different. So everybody's going to turn on their radar. And we're going to once again acquire the enemy uh, destroyers and cruisers. And just blow them up. Make sure that the landing fleet now really has no further obstructions. There will first be a couple of aircraft that are doing an attack run. That's not really the most interesting part. I'm really looking forward to butchering a couple of cruisers and destroyers, though. A little while later, enemy aircraft are shot down, and we are going to now open up against the enemy surface group. Again, it's going to be a very one-sided fight, and actually that's just how I like them. Because these guys could potentially pose a threat, depending on whether or not they use torpedoes. So we're going to open up with the heavy cruiser and the battleship. The destroyers are not going to be in range or anywhere near that for the foreseeable future. Because these weapons range out to 14,000 yards, these torpedoes, and my gun slightly more to 17. And I think that that also goes for the Juno. Because she is effectively a supersized destroyer. So it's currently just the Wichita and the Washington that are engaging. Washington opening up with her large 16-inch guns, currently slinging uh, armor-piercing at the enemy. Wichita slinging armor-piercing at the enemy, just of a slightly smaller caliber, in the form of 8-inch main guns. We have targeted the Kuma, as they might be leading this group. And yes, it could be a Kuma, it could be a, uh, what's the other thing, a Nagara, I think. But effectively, it is... Well, okay, before I get all the history critics on me again. Um, this is the Nagara. It has 438 crew members versus 439. When it comes to weaponry, uh, they have some different torpedoes. These ones have a range of less than 5,000 yards. The other ones have a range of 16,000 yards. And I'm very much hoping to stay away from either of those ranges. And yes, they might do some damage with their main guns, which are five and a half inch. So, well, maybe, I guess. Maybe. It's not terribly likely. And I'm not really going to uh, invite them to get too close in either. We're currently in 22,000 yards. If we can stay at that range, then perfect. Now, this is again one of those moments in the video where I'm a bit torn. Am I going to leave this in or not? On the one hand, this is the encounter. This is the fight. On the other hand, we're just slinging metal at each other. And these things tend to go on for a while, despite having a pretty damn good solution on them already. Um, so for now, I'm just going to keep this thing in. Uh, if it is boring, then feel free to skip to the end. Because after this battle ends, I'm still hoping to get my fleet over to Guadalcanal. Drop off the marines and the supplies and make sure that we capture that island. Although there is some talk that Guadalcanal cannot be taken. 
I haven't tested it yet. I haven't gotten that far into the campaign. But there is some talk in the town, and well, the Steam discussions page at that, that it is impossible to take Guadalcanal. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure why. I've seen people say, well, whatever I send at Guadalcanal, the enemy just keeps reinforcing it. They just magically conjure up another group of marines or troops, and they hold the island. Maybe. I haven't tested it yet. But if several people are struggling to try and take that position, and if people are even claiming that nobody has done it yet, then I'm really not surprised if I wouldn't be able to pull it off either. Because, well, if it's a bug, or maybe a feature even, then there's not that much that I can do to change it. Now... As I'm waiting for these guys to get hit, is there any way to distinguish these two ships? The Kuma and the Nagara? This is the Kuma. At least, the identification of the Kuma. Torpedo launchers, port and starboard, lifeboats. Oh, we got a hit on them. Uh, turrets. They got a launcher for scout aircraft. Whatever that hit was, it didn't do a lot of damage. The amount of weapons is exactly the same, is it not? That's the ten view. The only difference is the torpedoes. And I would not be able to tell from the top which torpedoes are in those torpedo tubes. I'm curious though. Currently, I have it identified as a Kuma, and my solution is about 84%. What if I identify it as a Nagara? Is it going to jump? Or not? Oops. No, 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 no. You're not a witch top, buddy. You are a Nagara. Contact 2 classified as Nagara Light Cruiser. Solution 80%, 82, 80. We're still around 80. Okay. If I go back to the Kuma. Because it's it's on a steady course, so nothing else is happening, right? Kuma. Uh no. Here. Last check. 84%. Fuck's sake, you need to remember what I'm looking at. Click. Ah, good hit. Uh, still around 84. Range, 18,000 yards. Means we're getting a little too close. Because if it is indeed the other class, then they might be able to torp me. And since they have no shortage of targets, they might actually get away with it. 16,000 yards. And that is from the Wichita. If I'm looking at it from the Nicholas's point of view. Nicholas is 17,000 yards out. Which means that the Nicholas is sort of in range. I see a smoke plume on the horizon. That's good news. That is one of their cruisers. So right now, I'm still outside of their torpedo range. Although... They really wanted to, they could probably hit me. So I'm going to try and head away from that fleet a little bit. Just a slight angle and make it difficult for them. Make sure that they, if they're going to try and hit me, it's going to be hard for them. Solution 88%. We've got a very nice sea state. Visibility is perfect. Radars are spinning. And these Japanese ships should be running. But they're not. And that's on them. Hopefully, though, it'll be the last of them. Um, I believe I've already sunk quite a few of their ships. And supposedly, the AI cheats like holy hell. And that means that you're going to continue to see ships spawn in. Uh, whereas I have to afford them. The AI doesn't. The AI just goes, haha, we got a new fleet. How they do it, I don't know. It's just, uh, I suppose, to balance the fact that human player can pretty much always outthink them. 
Now, how's that cruiser looking? A bit worse for wear. Those fires could prove fatal. Especially if you have fires on multiple sections of the ship. Good. Now, what's the torpedo range on the Mitsuki? Before I accidentally get torped by one of these little buggers. Torpedo range, 16,000 yards. Understood. And the other one was the Shiratsuyu. Um, no. Akatsuki. They won't torp because the rest of their group's in the way. But this one might. And the range to... Let's say the, uh, the Souffle. Souffle Mitsuki, 17,000 yards. Now it's tempting, in a way, to detach a couple of the destroyers and allow them to go on the offensive. Because by doing that, I can at least use a lot more of my fleet. But at the same time, I don't think it might be the best use of my assets. Sending in the destroyers is likely to get them heavily damaged. Which is not what I want for those ships. Because I will need them in case the Japanese deploy a bunch more submarines. So uh, they're just going to stay here. And it's going to be both the Washington and Wichita which will do the damage. We still have plenty of armor-piercing shells on the Wichita. How's Washington looking? 600 AP, 186 high explosive. Yeah, we're fine. We got plenty. Now it's just time. Yeah, this thing looks to be almost dead in the water. Slowing down, 11 knots. Good. She's also listening to port. Could be because of the turn. But I think that there's more than meets the eye here. I think that she might have some flooded compartments. Fire is still... Yeah, there's still a fire going here next to her funnel. Oh, and here too. Now, what I said earlier about the AI ships um, colliding with each other, apparently that's a feature. You can turn that on or off in the game settings, and I have it turned on as it's a default setting. They don't clip through each other. Uh, your ships, or rather, so they do clip through each other. Your ships do not. And that means that your ships uh, can inflict damage to each other. The enemy ships, the AI ships, if you will, don't. Simply because the AI sometimes has... Um How should I put this? It makes some interesting decisions when it comes to fleet formations. Let's put it that way. Now, considering what I'm facing, I might have the Juno go in and engage once the cruisers are dead. Because this is at least 12, most likely 14, because either of these turrets will fire. 12 5-inch guns, which I can very nicely bring to bear against those destroyers. Still burning, list increasing... Speed still 8 knots. Another hit. No idea whether that was 8 or 16 inch. Game doesn't tell you. We're not terribly accurate here. It's more like we're all over the place. Alright, let's see if I can help my ships. Wichita, Washington. Pay attention. I'm going for a manual firing solution. I'm going to assume that the Kuma is going to stay in a, st a straight line. Narrow salvo. Fire. Slightly ahead of the Kuma. And with a narrow spread of AP, I'm hoping that it's going to do enough damage to just eradicate that cruise roll together. The fire is definitely getting closer now. bit more. We should be able to take out that light cruiser. I think she stopped firing. She should still be in range though. 18,000 yards. Slightly ahead of the target. She's still doing 9 knots. Which I think is impressive because 
I've done a few surface to surface encounters so far. And most of the time, ships just end up dead in the water. Just pretty docile. Hit. Still nine knots. What are these guys up to? Still moving. I'm not seeing torpedo launches. Though, of course, they could have already done that if they really wanted to. There she goes. Alright, boys. New target. Ten Ryu. Juno. I'm going to detach you. I'm going to take manual control. You are also going to move in. Target Mitsuki. Range 15,000 yards. How much ammo do you have? Uh, yes. Holy shit. Almost 4,000 shells per turret. So we can almost immediately engage the enemy. Solution, 36% and going up pretty quick. So Juno, this is your moment to shine. Because I think that this is something that you're ideally suited to. The enemy is over there, there, and that's the sinking Kuma. There's the Tenryu. I'm one short. Is that because they're directly in line? Yeah, they're directly in line. The Mitsuki and the Akatsuki. If I identified them properly. Juno status? 86% accuracy. Or rather, the solution is 80%. 86% accurate. Right, you've broken with the fleet. Let's keep you more or less broadside, as I think you'll be uh, more than suitable for this role. Should be reasonably accurate as well. It's just a joy to see these things work. Rate of fire should be really nice too. One, two, three... Four, five, five second reload ish. Yeah, six seconds. We even got this graph, although I think. Let's see. Uh, if I'm interpreting this correctly, vertical armor penetration, horizontal armor penetration. So at a range of nothing, if you're point blank range, you're right next to the enemy ship you can pen 6.7 inches of armor. If you're at almost 14,000 meters, or the maximum range of these things, so let's say 17, uh, you're not hitting horiz you're not hitting vertical? Or whatever. No, I don't know enough about these to actually talk about them. Looks like one of those cruisers is having a bad day. Or one of those ships, rather. Tenryu is burning. DD seems fine. But should I turn that way with your whole group? I even have torpedoes, but that seems like an absolute waste to throw those at the enemy. By the way, in case I fire AP, or it says AP, I don't have any AP, so the game automatically selects something else in the form of HE. Looks like that cruiser is starting to slow down. Yeah, she's doing a mere 11 knots at this point. The Tenryu, or at least what I suspect is the Tenryu. The destroyer here... Slowly as well. 10 knots. Okay. It's like they're not even shooting back anymore. Oh, they are. Okay. Is the Tenryu indeed dead in the water? Pretty much. Alright, Wichita, Washington. Manual fire control. Oh, never mind. Uh, new target, Mitsuki. Fire high explosive, enable. Wichita, Washington, att attacking target for Mitsuki. 
Although I'm considering silencing the main guns on the Washington because... It's a bit of a waste firing either high explosive, 16 inch, or armor piercing. Armor piercing would be absolutely ridiculously overpowered against the destroyer. It would probably fly in one side right outside the other. So we're not going to do that. Solution, 86%. Against target Mitsuki, still doing 23 knots, seemingly, at least through the binoculars, unharmed. How's the battle looking from your end? Well, a lot of splashes around. You're down two cruisers. Your torpedoes are in range. But maybe not relative to the large group. What is the range? 14,000 yards in closing. Okay. But these little things keep doing all sorts of maneuvers, making them more difficult to hit. What's the Akatsuki doing? 32 knots. They're powering on out of here. I can do 33. Let's switch fire to the Akatsuki. We'll leave the um, Mitsuki to Washington and Wichita. I find it hard to distinguish whether I'm hitting them or whether they're shooting. Look at all those splashes chasing the Mitsuki around. There we go. That was a hit. That was definitely a hit because that is that was gunfire right there. But she is starting to smoke. And we're attempting to do damage against her buddy, the Akatsuki. Unsuccessfully so far, I think. Although the splashes seem to be getting uncomfortably close for that destroyer. Just how I like it. Ooh. <laughs> Look at those splashes. So close. Could be listing to starboard a bit. That was another hit. That was the incoming shells from the Juno. This is why I wanted an Atlanta in my group. How badly are you hurt? Because you keep taking hits. All looks blackened here towards the bow. Midship seems mostly fine. Told you to turn a bit too much, my bad. Ooh, your bow looks really deep. Unless you're planning to dive. But that's something that these surface ships can usually only do once. That's my ammo supply. Three, five, one, one twenty AG. And Washington. Four, four, four. Yeah, we're fine. I think these two are drawing from the same magazine. This is a separate one. Jesus, your freeboard is just gone. really just a matter of time now and it's not just you because your buddy Akatsuki is also getting pretty mauled by the Juno massive smoke plumes but I'm not seeing any fire yet What I find impressive is that she's still powering through the waves at 16 knots. Despite all of this damage. She still seems fine. Let's actually put these things to fire high explosive. Instead of armor piercing. Because sure enough armor piercing did a good amount of work here. But I think high explosive might just finish the job. And I know the whole rule of you fire armor, armor piercing against stuff that you can actually pierce. 
And you fire high explosive against stuff that you cannot pierce. But these things barely have any armor. So I can pierce them anyway. Right? And in that case, a high explosive, which I believe has more of an actual detonating charge, should do more damage. How much armor do you have? 0.7 inches of belt. No deck. One inch of armor over your magazine. No torpedo protection. Nothing on the turrets, the bridge, and the superstructure. And it is starting to show. Look at that bow. Holy shit. Rather you than me, friend. Though you might be of a different opinion. That's your friend. For some reason, they're cruising towards land. <laughs> At a speed of 15 knots. Should allow the Juno to catch up to you. I'm not sure if the AI is going to ram into the, the shore. Or... If they're going to do a last ditch turn. I've never actually seen them do this before. Oh, it looks like these guys have the fire under control. Unlike... <laughs> Unlike the Mitsuki. <laughs> ah, there goes the Mitsuki. Alright, we're gonna charge this guy down and see if we can kill it. Uh, Washington, Wichita, new target, target 3, Akatsuki, enable. And the destroyers can just, I don't know, sit around, eat ice cream, and watch the fireworks. Because they don't really have that much to do themselves. Where is she? There she is. Still seems healthy. Looks like she wasn't flooded either. At least not yet. Solution from Washington is building up. 60, 64, 66. There's probably going to be another massacre. Range, 18,000 yards. So we're still well outside of the torpedo range. But I'm not even sure what the AI considers a decent torpedo range. Yeah, you just got hit. Speed, 29 knots. Damn. 28 knots. Twenty-seven. She seems to be deeper in the water. Another hit. Twenty-four. She's losing a lot of speed in that turn. Twenty-one knots. Twenty... Seventeen, sixteen. She might be dead in the water. Well, she's going to be dead in the water anyway soon. But mostly dead underwater. Just got to let the Juno, Wichita and Washington finish this thing off. And then I really hope that the AI doesn't immediately snap their fingers and conjure up another battle group. Because I'm eager to drop the guys off at Guadalcanal. I've been teasing it for three episodes at this point, I think. But stuff just keeps getting in the way. In the form of a destroyer group, a cruiser group, aircraft. It's much like the Japanese don't want me at Guadalcanal. I don't even know why. We're just here to spread freedom. Range, 12,000 yards. Solution, 99%. Is she dead in the water? No, she's still doing about 10 knots. But she's still slowing. Listing over to port. So she's flooding, especially considering how deep she is in the water relative to about 5 minutes ago. Another hit. Come on. We're willing to accept your surrender. You'll be treated well. Just... Change your colors. Raise the white flag. Hit. Range, 11,500 yards. She's still trying to fight back. But I'm not sure... Who? Is she trying to shoot Juno?
Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Speed, one knot. Effectively, you're dead in the water. We're going to turn the broadside. We're going to go for a manual firing solution. Directly. Never mind. On top of the Akatsuki. That's her done. Let's go. Ship sunk? Yes, all of them. Lost? None. Carry on. Right. Now, these guys could launch another aircraft, so let's do that. I'll launch another Kingfisher. I lost one, thanks to a zero. So we're going to keep an eye on the waters here. And meanwhile, these guys should be almost at Guadalcanal. Holy shit, look at that. Two destroyers, two light cruisers and two heavy cruisers. Where the fuck did you even come from? Considering the amount of stuff that I have sunk... Can I sort these? No, I can't. They've lost Megami. They've lost Auba, Miyoko. Tone. I'm just seeing what sort of heavy cruisers they might have left. I've sunk 34 ships at the expense of five of my own. Most of those were sheer stupidity. Ah, oh, screw that. Ah! In a aircraft near TF7. TF7, pay attention. We're going to try and drop off all cargo. Manage cargo. Enable. No, cannot do it yet. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Well, this is going to call for another fight, but I'll do that another day in another episode. So, join me next time, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you as we're going to be task forcing, or, well, sending TF7, the Washington Task Force, which for some reason or another got redirected or renamed into TF7, even though I named it the uh, Washington uh, SAG. I think it might have had something to do with the Fletcher rejoining. Anyway, um... That's going to be next episode. Another encounter between TF7 and another group. So, join me next time, and I'll see you guys then.